What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we are doing the valve cover gasket on my 2005 VW Touareg. Um, this is my first time doing it, so hopefully I'm doing it right. If I'm not, let me know. Uh, I will have the parts and the tools that I use for this uh, repair listed in the description down below, so make sure you go ahead and check that out. Now, sit back and enjoy. So first, you want to take off this guy, which is the uh, air box kind of uh, the cover. Um, it's basically held in by two clips right here and right here. And then there is a hose clamp back here that you will need to pinch and then push in towards the center of the engine. If you pull out, um, you have a hell of a time putting it back in. I know because I did the other side and it was terrible. So um, let's try to get these guys off first. To get better access to the air box, remove the engine cover of the side that you're working on and also remove the center cover too. That way you gain better access to the hose clamp in the back for the intake. So this one was actually a lot trickier than the driver's side because it had this extra little hose right here. You basically squeeze and then it comes off. I think it's for some type of air pump uh, in the front. And then also you've got an extra hose right here which also just comes off. So make sure this one and also this guy, uh, you wanna take that off uh, before uh, you try yanking on it. Next, you want to take off these two 10 millimeter bolts that hold this metal tube right over the valve cover. Um, they have the little plastic ends on the back where the engine cover snaps onto. Now you can remove that metal pipe that goes across the valve cover uh, by pinching the sides of the plastic hose and pulling. It should come right out. Move this to the side so you have full access to the valve cover. Now it's time to unplug the ignition coils. There are four on each side, so make sure you get them all. So on these little clips, um, basically all you do is you tug the top right here. And you can see the little, a little uh, tab moves up. There you go, and it releases. However, this one, the, you can see the uh, tab was broken off by whoever serviced it last. So a trick is you just put a small screwdriver in there um, and you gently pry out. If the screwdriver is in like this, you gently pry like this, and then you should hear it clip, uh, unclip and you'll be able to pull it right out. So, um, you know, don't break these guys. Once you unplug the coils, now it's time to remove them. All you gotta do is gently give them a tug and they come straight out. So the last thing that's holding on the valve cover is the 12 Torx bolts. You've got five on the top, five on the bottom, and you've got two in the middle. They are size uh, T30, so make sure you have that. It looks like this, a little star. Um, you've also got this little breather hose. Um, I believe the other side, when I did it, somebody had already removed this. This is a one-time use clamp, so I'll have to cut this off and replace it with a hose clamp. But um, after that, make sure the uh, wire harness is uh, out of the way. We can tuck it to the side, get it out of the way, move this guy a little bit, and then um, we'll be able to pull the uh, valve cover gasket off. So now I've loosened all these Torx bolts. Now, um, one, imp one important thing to uh, take note of is these actually don't come out. There's a little lip that goes on to the gasket itself and it kind of hooks on. I'll show you once I take this thing off. Um, right now, I need to pry this thing open gently. Um, you don't want to bend this, you don't want to break it, so you want to take it uh, slow. Um, pry a little bit at a time from um, the different corners and um, you should be able to pop it right off. With the valve cover off, it is a good idea to check your chain and the chain tensioner back here, the cam chain tensioner. Basically, this is kind of a, a early 
variation of variable valve timing. But um, when these guys get old, the plastic bit, which is the brown bit right there, oops, the brown bit right there breaks off and uh, causes slack in the chain. Right now, you'll notice the chain is uh, the chain is nice and tight. However, if this shoe breaks off, it's only plastic. If it breaks off, it'll cause all types of problems. You'll have check engine lights, you'll have knock, you'll have all kinds of crazy stuff. Um, luckily for me, this one looks relatively new, like they just did it not too long ago. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and keep that in there for a while longer. But um, if you see yours, like uh, if it has a lot of scratches on the surface of the shoe, or uh, there's chunks missing, then most likely it has not been changed and you wanna take care of that immediately. So here is the valve cover with the old gasket still intact. Um, as you can see, it's actually relatively new. He, the previous guy that did it, did put some silicone on here. As you can see, like, you know, right here, um, you know, it's a little, you can see it coming off a little bit. But the main area where it was leaking, right here, there was no silicone. So, um, that is the reason why we're changing this today. Now, as far as these bolts go, I took one out already. Um, they look like this. This little lip sits inside the uh, valve gasket, valve cover gasket. So you plop it in and basically it's supposed to hold itself in there when you um, reinstall. So it's something like that. Um, I'll show you exactly how to do it when I put the new one in. Um, but for now, I need to clean off all this old silicone um, both on the uh, cover itself and also on the head because as you can tell it's got um, silicone pretty much uh, on everywhere except where it was leaking. So uh, once I clean this guy up we'll be ready for the install. Okay so I tried to scrape as much of the old uh, silicone the gasket maker off with the razor blade very very carefully. Um, however, some of the residue you can see right there, it's still there. So what I'm gonna do is use a piece of Scotch-Brite pad with uh, a little bit of brake clean and um, that should take it right off. You don't want anything too coarse like a, uh, like a steel wool or anything like that that's gonna uh, scrape the uh, head. Um, so just, uh, yeah, Scotch-Brite will work really good. Okay, first, um, with the new uh, gasket kit, you have the small ones. Uh, the small little o-rings and the bigger o-rings. The bigger o-rings are for these guys, the four spark plug sockets, uh, spark plugs, um, and the little ones are for these. And these, to change them out, kind of just gently pry them out. They pop out really easy. There's no um, need to like uh, pry really hard. And they look like this. So uh, make sure you change those out. And do the other one. Just be careful, don't pry like, you know, too hard or um, put too much uh, screwdriver against the, uh, the cover itself. Um, you don't want to scratch it. Once you get it up, you can just pick it out with your hand. So there we go. And then the bolts should drop out. There we go. These guys right there. The center ones are the longer ones as opposed to the side uh, 10, which are a little shorter. So those are out, and then we've got these guys still. So this is the new one. You can see how um, these little O-rings are. Um, basically, it sits into the cover like this. So when you pry, you wanna try to get it under here, not just this lip right here, because it'll just tear like white. Uh, it'll just tear. You wanna get it under here. Um, so be careful. If you do this, They come out just like that. So you gotta do all four. Let me do it again. And they just pop out. You don't use a lot of force. They might be a little bit stuck, but just be gentle. These are kind of hard now. Um, compared to the new ones, they're a lot softer. So um, um, just be really gentle. Try not to scratch the cover because once you scratch it, there's more potential for oil leaks. Okay, now it's time to install these little uh, little rings for the uh, spark plug holes. Now what you wanna do um, before you put them in, these guys are dry. Uh, you wanna clean out these guys, of course, on the cover itself. Then put a little bit of uh, clean engine oil. 
around these and then just uh, push them in with your hand. They sit flush against the cover. They go in really easy once you have a little bit of engine oil on there. Um, so you don't have to use a hammer or anything silly like that. You basically put a little bit of engine oil in and they go in just like that. For the next one, we're gonna do these little small ones that go into the two bolt holes. So again, a little bit of engine oil and then they just kind of pop in. Actually, they just sit right there. And what you're gonna do next is get your bolt, the longer one from the center, push them through the hole from the other side. And remember, there's that lip right there. So that's basically what the uh, seal grabs onto. So you wanna see if you can. Uh... Push that guy in. Let's use this hand. So you push it in, and then the bolt you see doesn't wanna come out anymore. And that's how it needs to be. So. For, I'll show you one more time on the other one. With a bit of engine oil inside and outside on this one. Put it in place. It's not gonna pop in or anything. The bolt actually is the thing that holds it in place. So then go in from the other side with the bolt. Pop the gasket over the uh, little sleeve, the little ledge on the bolt. There we go. And now the bolt doesn't fall out. See? Okay, so the next part we want to do is the valve cover gasket itself. Um, now on this guy, left and right is actually the same, uh, driver side, passenger side. So you want to get two of, uh, of these things. Um, and it doesn't matter which side, if it says left or right, it's the same thing. So just line it up correctly, squeeze it gently, into the uh, little uh, the little crevice, I guess, and um, just make sure it's not tangled. Make sure the surface is clean on the uh, cover itself, um, which I did clean this guy. It took a while. The previous uh, owner or whoever worked on it last decided to put a uh, gasket maker, silicone, um, in in between the cover and this, which is really not necessary. Um, I will show you where you will need to put a little bit of silicone in a little bit. But um, in general, this is how it's gonna sit. And what I'm gonna do next is put the bolts in. So that way it holds the gasket in place and the bolts don't go flying. So same thing with the other one. This one has a little lip on it. Um, you push it in from one side and it kind of like uh, locks it in place. Like that. So you wanna do all 10 of these guys. Um, plus you've got the two center ones before you get it ready to be uh, installed back on the head. So now that I have the surface uh, cleaned and ready for the new gasket. I used a little bit of uh, brake clean and paper towels just to make sure there's zero uh, oil on this. Now, um, one quick tip is right here, towards the end of the engine, this section right here, let me see. Um, this section right here, right there where my finger is, that's usually where like a little puddle of oil will stay around. And if you don't uh, clean that up properly, the oil will run over to the surface area. So by the time you put your gasket on, your, 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 your uh, gasket maker, it'll mess it up and you won't get a good seal. And I'm pretty sure that's what happened with, uh, with this guy last time. It was leaking from right there. So uh, make sure, what I did was I put a paper, uh, paper towel right there, soaked up most of the oil so it's not you know barely on the edge of the uh, surface. So uh, that way uh, it won't have a chance to leak out. Um, also, make sure this guy is clean. 
Like just run through it really quick, you know, with a little bit of brake clean and a paper towel. Um, because what I plan to do is put a little bit of gasket maker basically on the corner, right here, right here, on the corner right here, and also right there. Basically, um, to give it a better seal. Now, I know the uh, some people say, you know, all you need is engine oil and, you know, blah, 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 whatever. Um, this is just reassurance for me. Um, this is the way, you know, I usually do it on uh, the Land Cruiser and it's worked out great. Um, this is the exact same way I did it on the driver's side and so far no leaks. So uh, I'm going to do that and um, hopefully it will uh, not leak anymore. This is the gasket maker that I use, sorry. Um, it is Toyota stuff. Um, I don't know, does uh, VW have uh, something equivalent? If they do, let me know in the comments, but um, this is good stuff. Um, I'll leave a link in the description down below to where you can buy this, but this is, um, yeah, this is really good stuff. Where I put some of the gasket maker. Uh, you can see that down there. There on the corner. And then up here and also on that bottom corner right down there, all over these uh, two little lobes too. Um, you might want, you might, you might be asking like uh, why I didn't just put it on the cover. Um, this guy, it's a lot easier to reach. Reason being is on this side, there's just a lot of these hoses here and everything. Like if I put it on the cover while I was installing it, I'll probably get it all, get all the uh, gasket maker messed up um, and it, wouldn't seal properly so um, it's a little bit more difficult a little bit more messy but definitely try to put it on the head as opposed to the cover all right so now I have the bolts uh, installed with the valve cover um, right now it's just hand tight um, what I'm gonna do next is get the torque wrench and torque it down to uh, 10 or 11 Newton meters which is roughly about eight uh, foot-pounds um, so um, let's do that so now all the bolts are back in and they're torqued to spec. Um, just make sure you double check that you actually torque down every single bolt because I actually went back when I double checked there was one, which was uh, this corner one right here, I had forgot to uh, tighten. But um, now everything is tight. Um, next would be installing these guys. So basically, these are very simple. What you do, put them in the little space here and yep they line up with that little notch and you gently push them in like so and then repeat three more times with these guys all in next is to clip these things in back in kind of click when you push them in Okay. This guy, um, I unplugged, um, hoping that I could move the harness completely this way, which was false because it's actually tied in still right here. But um, when I removed it, all you gotta do is press this little button right here. You shouldn't have had to remove this guy, but either way, just plug it back in. Okay, there it goes. That's clipped back in. And then next, We've also got to um, hook this guy back up and also this guy back up. And don't forget a new hose clamp for uh, this one because we took off the uh, one time use hose clamp. Now we have this metal pipe tightened back in and underneath here, snapped it back into where it's supposed to go. All these guys are clipped in. We've got the hose nice and tight. I think the next step is to install the uh, airbox cover. Now, um, on this guy, to install it, you see you have these like uh, six little like uh, legs right here, and they basically go into the bottom of the airbox. If you can see, one, two, three, four, five, six, right there. So you push it in, and then you push the uh, top of the cover in, and then you clip. The airbox in right here at the top. The tricky part is getting this guy in to the hole in the back, the intake. Now what I use 
is uh, a little bit of this uh, heavy duty silicone. This works really well and it dries off completely clean so it doesn't stain uh, any of your plastics or leave residue or anything like that. But um, it's gonna it's gonna need it because um, that hole is like a pretty tight fit. Also, you've got the clamp in the back. So um, we're gonna put it in temporarily, like, you know, not all the way in because you can't, the clamp is right there. But you're gonna put it in as far as you can, put the, fiddle with this side, make sure this is all done. And then once, once this is all done, you can use the hose clamp and pinch the hose clamp together, put the hose in the rest of the way. So um, I'm gonna try to attempt to do this. And now I have the stock airbox cover back in with the air filter inside. And I have the most annoying hose clamp in the whole wide world uh, reinstalled. Um, so uh, when I said uh, you had to have the hose clamp on this side, not a good idea because uh, the side closer to the engine is soft. I had to take that out, put it back over here where it's a uh, uh, harder, hard plastic, and then had to use a combination of these really, really, really long pliers and um, some, uh, what are these things called? The uh, hose pliers uh, to get the clamp back on there because when it, uh, tightens up it, that that gap is so big you can't get regular pliers on there it's ridiculous but um, now I'm just gonna tighten up uh, some of these loose ends uh, I'm gonna reconnect this guy some of the hoses need to be hooked back up and then we should be uh, ready to fire so it's all done I left uh, this uh, cover off just so uh, I can start the car and in case there's a massive oil leak or a, uh, a hose that I forgot to hook back up I can easily gain access to that but um, all that's left is for it to warm up a little bit um, and see if there's any, uh, any uh, oil leak. Also, so far there has been no check engine light, which is good. Uh, so, uh, should be okay. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and subscribe and thanks for watching.